In this activity, you'll be exploring the conservation of kinetic energy when two carts collide and looking to see if kinetic energy is not conserved, if there was some other quantity that may be. So there are two different videos, one where the carts bounce off each other and one where they stick together. <clears throat> so here's an example of the cars bouncing off each other. Now, in the tips of each of these carts, in the end of the carts, there are magnets. So they don't actually touch each other. They just get really close, and then they bounce off. So we don't lose energy due to sound or anything else as they, as they bounce into each other. So here's a few more trials. I'm going to go ahead to trial 12, because your teacher probably won't get that far in assigning you. So we're going to go up here and see how we collect this data then. Okay, so here is trial 12. So you'll notice that the trial number is always up here, the masses are always listed here, and the description of what's happening is right here. The timer is here. In the timer, we don't need the minutes. We only need the seconds and the decimal seconds. So what we want to know, we want to know the velocity of the cars before the collision and after the collision. So in order to figure out the velocity, we know we need to figure out the displacement and divide that by the time. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to write down my initial information. And this is trial number 12. And I see that the red car has a mass of 0.500 and the blue car 0.250. And now the red car is right about at 29, I'm going to call that 28 and a half centimeters or 289 meters. My time is 35.20 and the blue car over here is at 53 centimeters or 53 meters. If this is blurry when you first open it up from YouTube, give it a second, it'll get back. If once it the video loads entirely, you should be able to see these numbers clearly. So now I've got an initial position for both of these carts and I'm gonna let it run a little bit until somewhere before it hits. So right now then, I'm going to record my new time. So my time here before the collision is 35.58. My red car is at, looks like 48, 47.4, I'm going to call that. And my blue car is still at 53 centimeters. Okay. So there's now from that I can calculate my speeds before the collision. Now we want to let it run a little bit. Now as soon as it collides, as soon as the collision is done, we want to start collecting data again. Now where do you collect? On the first one we said the center. Well what we're going to notice here is that the blue one, I can't get the end of it because that's probably going to go off the edge but I can still get this here. So I'm going to say at 35.79. And that, again, those are in seconds. And that's in seconds. Oops, sorry, that's my meters there. But okay. Um, so 57, the blue car is at 56, 57.4. Let's call that the blue car 57.4 meters and the red car the red car is going to be harder to see here we're going to start getting some parallax not reading it perfectly so I'm going to go over here to this side <clears throat> and I'm going to say 34 35 it's the end of this is probably more like 35 5 so the ideal way to do this would be to have two cameras tracking the carts so we could actually avoid any parallax. But we do have a little bit of parallax running in here. So now I want to get a, I've got all my initial. I want to get my final. So let it go for a while. And now again, over here on the blue car, I've got 74.5 maybe. And my time is 36.09.
and my position of the red cart afterwards looks like 41 and a smidge. I'm going to call it 41.4, just approximating where I think the end of that car is. So now you've got all the data. You can calculate the initial for both cars before the collision, the final for both cars after the collision. And when the cars stick together, one note on that, when the cars stick together, you will no longer be able to read the numbers in the middle. So for your after section, pick any position. So I'm going to pick way back here on the red car, 35, 36.5-ish maybe. Because both cars are moving at the same velocity, they are stuck together. If I get the position of the red car, I can use that for the position of the blue car as well. And then I would let it go a little bit. And again, the blue car is completely gone off the edge, but I can still get a number for the red car. So for the sticking collisions, you'll need to make sure you get a new position to record from rather than the center.